powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manobuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. And faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Obweda. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. And want to appreciate everyone who is viewing this broadcast from around the world today. And today we'll be sharing on prayer and prophesy to your day how to follow God's direction. You cannot truly live a great life when you're ignorant of God's direction for your life. You can truly maximize a great destiny if you don't follow God's direction for your life. God's direction for your life is what leads to productivity and to supernatural success. If you truly want to succeed, excel in life, win in life, you have to learn how to follow God's direction. The Spirit of God is here to help us unlock the will of God. The Spirit of God is here to help us unlock the will of God. It is by the Spirit we are able to connect with the purpose of God. And knowing God's direction for your life is the key to overcoming confusion. You know, confusion leads to limitation. One of the reasons why most people are being limited is because of confusion. And confusion is one of the weapons that the enemy uses against the purpose and the destinies of people. And when people are confused, it affects the use of energy, how they could coordinate their energy or their God-given resources. Because confusion is a great enemy. In Romans 8.14, it said, As a man that are led by the Spirit of God, you see, the mission of the Holy Spirit is to bring you into the will of God. This is the mission of the Holy Spirit, to bring you into the will of God. But we can truly function in God's will when we're ignorant of God's word. I want to say it again. I said we can truly function in God's will when we are ignorant of God's word. And knowing God's direction for your life should be a primary focus that I need to know what God is leading me to do in this season of my life. I shouldn't use my life for an experiment, but my life should be lived within a divine order that my life moves in the direction of God's established will. But for that to be experienced, we have to make a connection with God's word. You know, the scripture established in Colossians 3.16, it said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, that's so powerful. That's so awesome. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Now, if that word is in you, it becomes the very foundation in which you can do your thinking. It becomes the foundation for conversation. It becomes the foundation for expectation. 
So my expectation has to be consistent with his word. And the will of God for us is to function in the knowledge of God's word. Today we're sharing something very important. How to follow God's direction. Number one, we have to recognize the Holy Spirit as the source of divine direction. We have to recognize the Holy Spirit. Number two, we have to recognize the Holy Spirit as in an instruction giver. You see, if you don't see the Spirit of God as an instruction giver, and because he gives instruction for you to locate direction, Sometimes in ministry or in business, we're trying to pay for this or do this or buy this. But the Spirit of God knows what we really need in that very season of our life. If we don't listen to the instruction of the Spirit, we're going to disconnect ourselves from following God's direction. Recognize the Spirit's in all things. Why did they say recognize the Holy Spirit in all things? Jesus said, when the Spirit of truth come, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of truth. And his mission is to guide you into all truth. Now the truth about finance, the truth about relationship, the truth about job, the truth about any aspect of life, the Spirit of God is here to guide you. But He cannot guide you without, without you being submissive. Submission is required in following God's direction. Submission is required in following God's direction. If I'm going to follow God's direction, Submission required. If I don't submit to God's word, it will be difficult to be led by God's spirit. It's going to be very difficult for any of us to be led by the spirit of God if we don't submit to God's word. It's going to be difficult because the spirit of God will lead you in the knowledge of of the will of God, which is the word of God. So if I don't submit to the word of God, it is difficult for follow the leading of the spirit because every leading of God's spirit is consistent with God's word. Every leading, every leading of God's spirit is consistent with God's word. Every leading of God's spirit is consistent with God's word. So if I truly want to see greater manifestation, I need to respond in submission to his leading. Now, for me to respond in submission to the leading of the Spirit, Romans 12 2 said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Now, the condition of your mind has a lot to do with responding to the leadership of the Spirit. The condition of your mind has a lot to do with responding to the leadership of the Spirit. If my mind is not transformed in the light of God's Word, it will be difficult for me to connect with God, to connect with His Word, to connect with His plan. To be difficult because I won't be able to connect in Philippians 5 verse 2. He said, Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. It is the mind of Christ that makes all the difference. So when we renew our mind with God's word, it helps us to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. It's easy to respond to the Holy Ghost when your mind is renewed with God's word. 
it is easy for you to flow in the will of God and follow the direction of God's will when your mind is renewed with God's word. Now, what happens when the mind is not renewed with God's word? It will become difficult to assess the voice of the Spirit and make the connection because the mind is not renewed. So it's difficult to make the connection. This is why I would say to people, don't be so busy that you don't have time to read the Bible. Because if you are going to minister to people, or you want to live a productive life, a successful life, you have to renew your mind in the direction of the will of God. It helps your sense of judgment. You see, poor judgment or great judgment is directly related to the condition of our mind or the quality of mind we have developed according to God's word. I said, poor judgment or great judgment is directly related to the condition of our mind. The condition of our mind to the extent in which we have developed the mind with God's word, using the word of God to change our way of thinking. When I talk about the mind here, the major thing in the mind has to do with thinking, Rexpon, the way I think, comes from the condition of my mind. The way I think is a result of the condition of my mind. So if my mind is transformed with God's word, my way of thinking will connect with the will of God. It is easy for me to connect with the will of God when my mind is renewed with the word of God. But it's difficult to connect with the will of God if my mind is not renewed with God's word. So, how we are being led, how we are able to follow the spirit of God, the, the follow God's direction for our life, is, is different from everyone. You will determine if you want to be following God's direction for your life. Based on these things I've shared, the condition of your mind, a lot of people are not investing into their mind a lot. You know, because the Holy Spirit doesn't force us into the will of God. But the Spirit will subject the will of God. He will lead, but we have the choice to follow. The Holy Spirit doesn't force you into the will of God. God will not compel you to do His will. God gives us opportunity to choose between His will between his will and our opinion. You see, he gives you the option. He doesn't force you into it. This is why spiritual sensitivity is the key to spiritual success. You can't truly be successful in the things of the Spirit if your mind is not consistently that is the word. If your mind is not consistently being renewed according to God's word, it will be difficult to know where God is leading you to. This is why many believers lose a lot of things, miss a lot of things. They were not able to get the things God wants them to get. They were not able to experience the thing God wants them to experience. Because of the condition of the mind. But the Holy Spirit wants to reveal God's will, wants to show you God's direction, 
but he can only do that based on your willingness to follow how willing you are this is so important how willing you are to respond you see the problem has not been with God it has been with our response how we respond to the things of the spirit how we respond to his word your your level of response determine what you can experience your level of response will determine what you can experience level of response and your level of response is directly related to your level of sensitivity your, your response is directly related to your level of spiritual sensitivity. You know, as I begin to round up, let's look at Romans, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Glory be to God. Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, I want to read verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. We are, we are seeing what is going on here. You see, someone is focusing more on the flesh. He's focusing more on the things of the flesh. So it's difficult for him to grow in the things of the spirit. Your spiritual growth is directly related to your hunger towards God's word. You can't grow spiritually except you have hunger towards the word. I was praying this morning. I said, Lord, two things I want you to do for me. I want you to cause me to have more hunger to read your word. And hunger to spend time with you in fellowship, in prayer. It was a prayer. I want to spend more time with your word. I, I want to spend more time fellowshipping. You see, this is where we generate strength for whatever God has called us to do. Because you don't generate strength from the flesh. You generate strength from the spirit. So he said that the righteous, uh, look at here, Romans 8 verse 5. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse 6 said, For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, being spiritually minded is a decision. Being spiritually minded is a decision. If, if you don't make the decision, you can't be spiritually minded. If you don't make the decision, you can't be spiritually minded. To be spiritually minded is a decision. It's a decision. So he said, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He said, for to be carnally minded is death. That's the right word. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if we're not spiritually minded, we can experience the life, the peace. Those who are spiritually minded are quick to respond to God's direction. Those who are spiritually minded, they are quick, very quick to respond to God's direction. They are very quick to respond. They are quick to, to respond. They are quick to follow. Very quick to follow because they are spiritually minded. They are quick to say, this is the will of God. This is God's direction. Because they're spiritually minded. But those who are not spiritually minded find it difficult to connect with the will of God. 
Now, there are people, if they want to know from God, if they want to know the will of God, they have to go into fasting for many days before they can hear from God. There are people like that. A lot of Christians are like that. But there are people, they don't need fasting to hear from God because they live in the knowledge of his presence. Their life is centered around God, so they are always in communication. Go left, they are going left. Go right, they are going. So it's not difficult for them to hear the voice of God because they have the knowledge of his will. But those without the knowledge of his will need to travel, need to go to a mountain somewhere, need to go to somewhere to pray, to be able to hear from God. But do you know, you don't have to do all of those things to hear from God. It's good to fast and pray. I fast and pray. But hearing from God is based on relationship. I don't have to fast and pray to hear from my wife. My children don't have to fast and pray to hear from me. Relationship makes communication available. Relationship makes communication available. Spiritual things are not as difficult as being presented by many teachers or Bible preachers. Spiritual things are not difficult. Relationship is the key to communication. If I have a good relationship with you and you want to do something, you will say, Apostle, I want to do this. What do you think about it? You don't have to fast to talk to me. Neither do I have to fast to talk to you. Why do we think it is difficult to hear from God? It's not difficult. All the things I've done in ministry most of the time, I wasn't fasting when God started it. When God started it, relationship is, the, is what makes communication available. If there's going to be communication, there has to be relationship with God. So, your relationship with God determines hearing instruction. Because in relationship, one of the key things that is available in relationship, a good relationship has communication, a good relationship has communication, a good relationship has instruction, has direction, has protection, has provision. So when you are in relationship with God, it's not difficult for you to know the direction God wants to take you to. It's not difficult. I've never found it difficult to know what the will of God is of my life. I've never found it difficult to know, God, what do you want me to do? God, in my spirit, I will just feel it. Go this way. Go that way. Go this way. Do this. Don't do this. Go here. Don't go here. It's just available. It's available. And the reason for that is relationship. I don't have to fast to hear from God. I don't have to fast to hear from God. He lives in me. He talks to me. I hear his voice. The Spirit is in me to lead me. The Spirit that will lead you is already in you. If you're born again, the Spirit that will lead you is already in you. He's already in you to lead you. But sometimes Christians make it look complex. You know, some people, if the teaching is not difficult, they are, oh, that man of God is not powerful. I won't. 
powerful revelation. I want powerful this. And their lives is not changed. It is not powerful revelation you need. What you need is the simplicity of the gospel. And it will make your life easy. That's what you need. It's not one deep revelation. But their lives is not changed. They keep having deep revelation. But they like the gospel is so simple. Jesus never made anything difficult. If you see someone making teachings difficult, they don't know what they're talking about. Jesus never made his teaching. If you go read Matthew chapter 5, it's not difficult. Blessed are the pure in spirit. Blessed are they. So simple, simple things he was just sharing. Simple, simple things Jesus was just sharing. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. Is it difficult to know? It's not difficult. Jesus never made the teaching so difficult. It made it so easy. So when I see people trying to teach some things and make it look that they are sophisticated, I know the problem there is that someone is trying to look for recognition or someone is trying to make himself look more powerful before people. But that is not what makes you powerful. The gospel is simple. How do you follow God's direction for your life? Is what I'm teaching. When you begin to read the word of God, one of the things we have to deal with is a mentality that is not consistent with God's word. When I talk about a mentality, a a way of thinking that is not consistent with God's word, we got to take it out. You know, we got to do, when you talk about strongholds, strongholds are a way of thinking that is in opposition to the will of God for your life. That stronghold is a way of thinking. The real stronghold exists in the mind. Not just uh, maybe in Africa, you know, they have shrine. Not only Africa, even in America, there are shrines. There are all kinds of people who practice witchcraft. They have their witchcraft symbols or they keep it in their place. Now, you know, a lot of people think that all the demons are in Africa. It's not true. Everywhere in this earth, there are evil spirits. There are false prophets. There are false teachers everywhere. So, they have their symbols. And people would think that that is a stronghold. But the, those are not the real stronghold. The real stronghold is what people have believed that is not in line with God's word. That is what is defeating the people. If you're watching me today and you're going through all kinds of defeat, uh, defeat, all kinds of uh, situation that is molesting you, you're losing things, the first thing you need to begin to check is what is in your mind? What do you really think? What do you really believe? I gave a lift to someone this morning and the person was just telling me all kinds of problems he's going through, so many things. Then I asked him a question. What kind of church do you go to? He now told me the kind of church he goes to. Then I know that is a problem. And the way he was talking, he was not talking like someone who wants to leave that church. Then he told me that in their church, they want to have a, a sugar night service. They call it sugar night. And I asked him, what what do they do in sugar night? He said, they are going to give them sugar and things like that to lick. Now, the reason may be that if they take the sugar, their life will be sweet. But that is not what makes your life sweet. I look at the guy. I knew that he has wrongly been taught. But the way he spoke, I couldn't even talk. I was just looking at him suffering. You know, some people keep suffering. Not because God wants them to suffer. But wrong teaching has held them whole stage. Wrong teaching. You have people having sugar service, salt service, oil, anointing oil service, all kinds of... Those are not the things that would change people. A lot of people are still in bondage. Jesus said, you will know the truth. 
The truth will make you free. What makes you free is not all of those things you carry, people carry. And I look at the guy. The suffering is there. All he needed was a shift in his mind. And Satan is very good at this. He wants you to believe things that are not in line with God's word. That is enough to subdue your life. That was why the scripture said, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. That's what the scripture said. Because the mind of Christ is the mind of possibility. Is the mind of possibility. The mind of Christ. The real stronghold is a belief, is a teaching that have created a belief system in a person that is not consistent with God's word. And those kind of teachings go where people bound, you know, they, they, they can't really make progress. They're always shouting, fire, 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 die by fire, you know, all of those things. If that's their way of prayer. They pray it all the time. It started in Nigeria. That prayer, die by fire, started in Nigeria. Which of the scriptures will you find die by fire? There are a lot of teachings that came into the church. And many Christians never look into their Bible. They are moved away from the truth of the gospel. Somebody said, Apostle, he, uh, he, he, he gathers people. He brings money. I was talking to a friend one time while having a lunch. I said, why do people do all of those things? He said, man of God, don't you know? That is an easy way to get the money. Wow. They get the money quickly. My heart breaks. I, I used to weep. I used to fear. I just, uh, I imagine myself. What about if I never knew God's word to this point? What about if God never taught me? That means today I could have been suffering with all of these things going on in the body of Christ. My life, my children's life, my wife's life. We could have just been in real that way. Because of religious teachings. When you hear people teach or preach, learn to consider the Bible. Especially the teachings that has to do with the person of Christ and his finished work. Learn to Get into the scripture. If you don't get into the scripture, deception can sweep you off. It's sweeping so many people off today. You, you, you don't use popularity as an indication for receiving ministry. You don't receive ministry from someone because he's popular, he's famous. I was teaching yesterday in our local church and I said, my vision is not to be successful. That's not my vision. My vision is not to be famous. That's not my vision. My vision is simple. Help the next man gets God's word. That's what makes my life interesting. Help the next man. My vision is not, I'm not in ministry to, oh, I want to be successful, so I have to do this to be successful. That's not why I'm in ministry. I can be a basketball player and be successful. I can be a real estate man and be successful. There are many business people to do that are successful. There are many things to do to be successful. But the, the most important thing is not when it comes to God, it's more than success. You have to think above being successful. 
Anybody can be successful. But it's not everybody that can be significant. It's not everyone that can be significant in their generation. It's not everyone that can be a, a role model, an inspiration to the generations to come. Anybody can be successful. Buy a car, buy a house, build something. It's success in the natural. But what is the influence this person generates? How does he impact the lives of people? How does he change the lives of people? This is the direction of my thinking. This is what I think. My focus is how to help the next man get the word. God has my focus. That's the main, the major focus for me. Praise God. So, we're sharing on how to follow God's direction for your life. Now, I have this to say before I round up because we're about to go into our 90 days. We already spent some time here. Now, I want to show you this. Ignorance. Ignorance is a major weapon of Satan. The major weapon of Satan is ignorance. If he can make you to be ignorant of what you should be experiencing in Christ Jesus, then he's done. And ignorance comes when people don't know and they are not inquisitive to know. There is no desire to learn the word of God. Then ignorance leads to spiritual oppression. This is why the scripture said in Isaiah 4 verse 6, it said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So what really destroy God's people is lack of knowledge. Then you see all kinds of destruction. All kinds of destruction. And they're wondering, they're born again. But they're not living in victory. Why? Because they're ignorant of God's word. You will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. So freedom is directly related to the application of God's word. Oh, let's begin to thank the Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. I want us to begin to pray for revelation knowledge. That God will grant us revelation knowledge. In the knowledge of His will, le kombro do sekendo ribra kanda baba, rikondo robo sakanda le blagera, rikondo lobo sakanda le blagera. Lord, we thank you. Rikama sakanda le blagera baba, rondo robo sakanda le blagera, rikondo le blagoda maso kondo le blagera, rando robo sakanda le blagera, rondo robo sakanda le blagera, rakanda le blagera maso kondo le blagera, rakanda le blagera maso kondo le blagera. In the name of Jesus, run the robot, second the lagada, recondo the lagada, 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 second the lagada. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Let's pray that the knowledge of His will will come to you. This is the key to effective living. The knowledge of his will. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for the knowledge of your will to explode in our spirit, to overtake our spirit, man. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare that the knowledge of your will will explode in our spirit. We'll be able to connect with the knowledge of your will in the name of Jesus. I decree that you walk in the revelation of the will of God. I decree that you will flourish in divine purpose. I pray that the hand of the Lord will rest upon you mightily in the name of Jesus. I come in agreement with you right now that whatever your expectation is in this season, 
May you see supernatural manifestation. May you see supernatural release. May you see supernatural open doors. In the name of Jesus. Your needs are met. Your bills are paid. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree every opposition to come to an end. I speak peace into your life. I speak increase into your life. I pray for you right now. That the knowledge of the spirit of God will overwhelm you. To think in the direction of his divine order. Thank you father. I pray for supernatural insight. I pray for supernatural understanding of your word. To come upon your people. And everyone watching this broadcast around the world. In the name of Jesus. Thank you father. In Jesus name. Amen. Maybe if you're watching this broadcast this morning, it's always a joy to bring forth the uncrafted word of God. And if you're watching me and you're not yet born again, you have not known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, can you say this after me? Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father. For saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, you're born again. And the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to a place where you can be taught God's word. As you can grow in the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And also want to encourage people to subscribe to our YouTube channel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Happy pastor anniversary to Pastor Vietnam, you and your first lady. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our church was 17 years yesterday. So thanks to all our friends and partners, everyone who viewed the broadcast. We are happy that you did. Thank you very much. On behalf of me, my entire family and the church, we say thank you to all our friends and partners around the world. Thank you very much. So we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. And we also encourage you to share the videos with your friends. To share the videos with people. i like you to help more people with this teaching. Don't just keep it to yourself alone. If God is blessing you, be, be willing to open your hands and share with more people. Please, this is what gives me joy when people are able to listen to this message from different corners of the earth. It gives me so much joy and excitement. Hallelujah. Now, our PayPal is back. You can do your giving. We're encouraging people to sow today into this ministry. And through PayPal is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Now, through your giving, it helps us to be able to reach out to more and more people around the world. So, we're encouraging you today to take out a seed and set up a soul. I just want to be a blessing to this work as you can continue to take this message to more people around the world. So we encourage you to use your PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. So we encourage you today to go to PayPal and be a blessing to this work as we can continue to take this gospel to more people around the wall. Now, tomorrow is going to be 1st of November. We're starting a conference, uh, a partners conference tomorrow. We will call it International Partners Prayer Conference tomorrow. Uh, International pa uh, Partners Prayer Conference starts tomorrow. Now, I'll be praying for all our partners for eight days. The Lord gave me a word to pray for all my partners around the world for eight days. It's going to start from first of November to 8th of November, I'll be praying for all our partners, all those who stood with the ministry, all those who are standing with us. I'll be praying for them for eight days and teaching all our partners. It's going to be live here. So we're having international partners prayer conference, international partners prayer conference for eight days. So we want to encourage you to stay connected to it. And it's going to be life changing. We'll be praying for your need, for your finances, for your job, for your relationship, for whatever you're believing God for. We'll be here praying for eight days and commanding the blessing to come. So it's going to be after prayer and prophesy to your day. But the Sunday evening, we're going to have on Sunday, it's going to be evening section for maybe the evening of my time here for the prayer and partner conference. So we want to say a very big thank you to you and everyone watching this broadcast. So we're going to be right back 
in the next few minutes to continue our 90 days. We love you until our next broadcast. Don't forget, there is greatness in you.